All right, guys, welcome back. If it's your first time here, hit the subscribe button. Don't make it your last and hang on for the ride. So today we're gonna to be building a fuel injector tester circuit. We're gonna use some of these graduated cylinders, fuel rail, injectors, a little bit of magic. Hopefully this thing is gonna work. This is a DC square wave frequency generator and it's gonna be adjustable. Uh, so hopefully it'll work to activate a relay I'll be able to adjust the, the frequency and the injector pulses to get the dynamic testing done. If this doesn't work, worst case, we'll still be able to do the static testing where we put the injectors on and run them to get a measurement. So stay tuned, check out the build. Hopefully you guys like it. Let's do it. All right guys, so as always, this is gonna be a very, very budget, as low buck as possible thing to do. So uh, this thing right here was $3. So I really hope this works because it was $3 plus shipping. So it came to like a little bit over six bucks. Um, now I just broke it. Uh, so that's the end of the show, guys. Anyways, hopefully this thing works. That'll be really cool. But let's check out the rest of the part. A board, a two by four, a battery. I'm gonna use some 516 threaded rod, fuel rail, the frequency generator, some of these uh, little PVC pipes, and my plan for these is to actually hook them onto this board. I'm gonna cut this thing in half, and then I wanna use these to actually clip these tubes into the pipe. So that should work out pretty nice. A switch, I'm gonna use the fuel pump out of this. I'm not gonna use the whole sending unit. I'm just gonna steal the fuel pump and the regulator, because I'm not gonna be using that for the turbo build. And I'm using a old relay out of a Nissan and some old wiring that came out of a furnace. So that old wiring came out of this box right here. This was uh, my old uh, furnace computer thing and I've just been stealing parts off this thing since it went bad a couple years ago. So that's where the wiring came from. That's pretty much all the parts. Uh, I'll probably be using a couple other things. I'll let you know as we figure it out, but let's get started. All right guys, so the idea here is take this now that I got it cut, it's just gonna pop right over that like that. So basically this is gonna be secured to the wood and I'll be able to pop it in and it'll hold them in place just like this. I'm adjusting the plan a little bit because the, the fuel rail does have the injectors kind of coming out at an angle. I'm gonna stagger them up like this so the cylinders will be vertical and I don't have to worry about the injectors being at an angle. So instead of just using the two by four, I'll use a two by four and this piece of wood. And I'll probably end up cutting it to the right width, but I'm gonna have it come up at an angle. So the, uh, the cylinders, the graduated cylinders can kind of be up at an angle also. And then the injectors will flow straight down into the tube. Just to get a little idea what this little Jiminy Cricket is gonna look like. We got this, these are nice and uh, attached onto the board. They come off nice and easy, clip back on, adjustable in height, and then this will sit nicely like this. And the injectors will be able to spray straight down. You'll be able to see the pattern and uh, it should work pretty good. Okay, so I'm hooking up this little box now. This little pulse generator thing. All I did was take some wires and solder them onto these little leads. So we have a power, a ground, and then this is a signal output. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this signal output wire and I'm gonna hook it up to this relay. So I have power, I have ground, and they're also hooked up to the power and ground on this box. And I'm gonna hook this up here. Let's get this thing hooked up to the battery. Hook up the ground. So now we can see this LED is flashing. So that's actually what that the pulse is doing right now. So that's what this is making. Um, there's two adjustment points on here. There's two potentiometers on here. These little blue boxes. I think those are like 20 turn or something. They're a lot of turns. So now I'm gonna hook it up to this relay and you'll be able to hear it start clicking. So now the signal that this box is making is sending a signal out to the relay and making it click. And then from the relay is what I'm gonna run the injectors with. Because this is a 35 milliamp signal, it's enough to run this uh, relay. 
but it would probably fry this box. So that's the signal that I have right now, but if I use these uh, adjustments on here, You can see it speeds up quite a bit. So that's the relay clicking. We'll slow that back down. So I would say that's about the speed that I would want to run that at. I would say that's pretty close to what an injector pulse would be. So that's about that. So now I'm pretty confident in that, that this will actually get me a pretty decent pulse. Should be able to do the static and the dynamic testing. Okay, so here's where I'm at with this rig here. Uh, I do have the graduated cylinders underneath. They're easily removable. When I'm done testing, I can just take it out, be able to dump the fuel back in the container. Works out pretty nice and they pop back in there. This is easily adjustable and removable. It just slides up and down on the threaded rod, which is uh, drilled into the wood. Battery in the back, I'll have a fuel container. This is the fuel pump and regulator from the Ranger. It's a 98 Ford Ranger. I like this one because it's regulated right after the pump and it dumps it right back into the same container. So the regulator is not like far away. And you can just keep it right in one unit and dump it right back into the same container. So I might be able to mount a container on the backside and just have a couple switches. One to prime the, prime the pump, one to run the injectors, and then I'll be able to pull fuel right out of the container and then dump it right back into the container. And it should be uh, relatively smooth. So that's the plan. I do have to get a fuel line for this top piece up here to run from the container up to there. So I'll pick up a couple more parts tomorrow and we'll get going. Should be able to get some stuff tested tomorrow and. At least start playing with it. So I'm sure you guys are all wanting to know how much did it cost? The graduated cylinders, I ended up getting all four of those for just over $10. That's not too bad. The frequency generator, that thing was $6. And all the other parts I just had laying around. The threaded rod, the wood, the battery, the wiring, everything else was just laying around. The only thing you could uh, consider a cost was the fuel rail and the injectors. That was $30. Um, but that's just because I wanted a separate rail and separate injectors, separate harness, just for this thing. I didn't want to use the rail and injectors out of the truck. So if you decided that you wanted to use your own fuel rail and your own injectors out of your vehicle, that wouldn't cost you anything because you already have it. So my total cost that I have into this thing right now is $46, uh, but that's including the rail and injectors. If you use your own, it would only be 16 bucks. 16 bucks and you can test your own injectors. Now, if you're wondering about the fuel pump, why I didn't consider that a cost, I already had it in the vehicle. I'm using a different fuel pump because I'm going to a turbo and I need more fuel. So I'm just pulling that thing out of the truck anyway. So I just considered it as, as one of those parts that's laying around. If you really needed a fuel pump, I'm gonna share something really cool with you guys right now. Okay, that thing, I bought one, a $2 fuel pump. It's supposed to do like 40, 50 gallons per hour or something like that. So I got that thing, it'll be here in a couple days. $2 fuel pump, I'll chuck it in this thing and we'll test it, we'll see what it does. So stay tuned for the video of actually testing the injectors. Hopefully that works out pretty smooth, but that should be up in the next day or two and hopefully it works. Have a good one.